Matt Blunt, you've been a great vice chair, and uh, really uh, a lot of the credit uh, over the last couple of years goes to your selfless uh, efforts on behalf of RGA, and uh, we look forward to being there in Missouri with you this year to make sure that uh, you're back right here with us as you belong, and Missourians get a, uh, a great... Uh, a great governor once again. So thank you very much. Let's give Matt Blunt a real thanks. You know, the annual conference is a time after Thanksgiving when we come together, and I think Americans are in a thoughtful mood, and uh, as Thanksgiving has passed and we prepare for Christmas and the New Year, we often reflect on the holidays, and as Governor Rounds uh, talked about, the blessings that we have, the courses in our lives may t have taken, and uh, Mary and I are blessed with uh, four children, uh, all prolific children. In fact, we're having a litter of grandchildren next year. We'll have three little Purdue grandchildren next year. that will make ten, so uh, the first lady doesn't look like uh, having a grandmother that ten, but uh, I do, but nevertheless, I can remember when our son was five years old, and uh, he was in that I'd want to do it myself stage, and Mary was trying to help him learn how to dress for church and to get everything all straightened up, and he was impatient and uh, always that way, and she was trying to help him to teach him to button his shirt, and he just didn't want her to do anything for him. He wanted to do it himself, and uh, I'll do it myself, Mom, and we knew that we are in a hurry always on Sunday mornings and going to church, and uh, he would uh, try to get his shirt ready, and he, he, he would try to button, and he got everything doing well with the buttons going in the hole, but he'd miss the first buttonhole, and he got to the bottom, and he'd be so frustrated, and he finally said, Mommy, it just won't turn out right. <laughs> and she and Mary is in her gracious, patient self, not only with our four children, but her five children, including me, as patient as she always is, and she's taught me so much about life. She responded to him in that unconditional love way, and she said, Son, it will turn out right, but only if you get the first button right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a message really for us at RGA and for us in our states. Things turn out right, but you've got to start in the right place. And I think for the last few years, we need to sort of admit that our party has been a little bit like our five-year-old son and that we've taken some things for granted, we've been impatient, and we may not have started outright. Um, this year... RGA sat back, took a good look in the mirror, and looked at ourselves, and uh, I think we all saw that we believe we can do better, and our party can do better, and we need to be stewards of that party who still has the values that most Americans believe in. People have not abandoned the values of the Republican Party. They haven't ab abandoned the principles that we stand for but they are going to abandon those of us who don't implement and execute those principles in a way that we say we believe in. And it did start with making a four-year plan, and while that may be common sense to business folks like your corporations and companies out there, most political committees, as you well know, uh, don't ever look past the current election cycle. But, ladies and gentlemen, when you run between three and 36 races over a four-year cycle, that's a lot of volatility and a lot of range in the needs. And so when we looked at that, you just can't do that just from year to year, hand to mouth. And we realized it would take a four-year plan. We needed to think strategically, and we needed to budget responsibly over that four-year cycle because of the volatility of those races. We understood that you need to recruit candidates, not just in the year before you're going to announce, but you've got to groom and recruit candidates and get them infused with the energy and enthusiasm of the Republican Governors Association, preparing them for a vision, preparing them for the energy and the excitement of, of readying them to lead their states. And you've got to keep a staff in place that can provide some continuity and not have to learn different people, places, and things, and and every year as we go out. Folks, the good news is I have for you, a political committee can do all those things right. We can get all the buttons right and we can still lose. We can have that shirt buttoned, but as time goes on and the American public grows, we've got to grow with them. 
The good news is that we can do that. We can do it within our states. We can lead this nation from our individual states. Conservatism isn't this rigid ideology that the opposing party would have you think. It's a philosophy with very simple, broad principles that matter. We're called to govern responsibly in our states. We're called to make things happen and to solve people's problems, to leave our states better than we found them, and to let the people be as safe and as free as they possibly can and let the American dream take them to the heights that only they can determine. In, in short, conservatism means to govern in a way, and Mary and I think about this a lot, to govern in a way that when we look our grandchildren in the eyes, we're sitting on the porch rocking. We don't have to apologize to them for the decisions we made, that we leave it better than we found it. The old adage that we hear from Native Americans is that we're not, uh, we're really borrowing from their future, and we want to make sure that we leave a good deposit there as we go forward. And that's why we are driven as Republican governors to make sure that we leave it better than we found it. That's why I believe if we govern well, if we implement those principles of conservatism that we say we believe in and do what we say we're going to do, then I believe the Republicans will be the preferred party in America. If you really think... You can think back to the time that the Republican, there's been a huge shift in just our generation. Think back to the time that the Republican Party was emerging as the People's Party. All the pundits thought we were just campaigning on big ideas. But frankly, they were really common sense ideas like we heard today in the plenary session. Ideas championed by governors who got things done. Unfortunately, the kind of ideas that never came from Washington ideas like child tax credit, requirement for a balanced budget, requiring laws passed by Congress to be abided by by Congress. That's why today the Republican Governors Association is focused on policy and not just politics, because we truly believe that good policy is good politics. We're studying and we're sharing the best practices of all of our states, none of us individually have all the best ideas. None of us is as smart or as strong as all of us. And the team spirit for Republican governors is alive and well and as strong as I've ever seen it. We're sharing our best practices among ourselves. We're giving polling data to help people understand our, our candidates and the candidates to come to understand what the voting electorate expects of us. We're holding our senior staff retreats where our governor's policy advisors discuss issues, deep issues, not surface, but deep issues, questioning one another uninterrupted for hours at a time. Because, once again, we believe good policy is good politics. I think about a story that Abraham Lincoln uh, was told about him years ago, and I, I think it sums up our philosophy best. And, you must know that if a southern governor is quoting Abraham Lincoln, it must be pretty good. <laughs> In the midst of a civil war, a clergyman had met with the president and concerned about the, the war between the states and the, and the cost it was having to our, our nation on both sides. And uh, they were fretting about the outcome. And the, and the preacher told Lincoln, he said, I, I hope the Lord's on our side. And Lincoln looked him square in the eye with those deep, beady eyes, and he told the preacher, well, I don't agree with you. And sort of stunned and amazed, the clergyman gasped and looked back, puzzling at Lincoln and said, what do you mean? How can you say that? And Lincoln said, it's my prayer, preacher, that I and this nation should be on the Lord's side. And ladies and gentlemen, I would submit to you tonight if we govern with that kind of humility, I believe that we win, will win back the hearts and minds and votes of the American people. And you know what? It starts here, tonight, with the governors in this room, with your support. Folks, it, 
Change is not going to come from Washington. We understand that. It's going to bubble up from these governors and these states, these laboratories of democracies, as we go out and implement the creative new ideas that Newt Gingrich was talking about today, changing things, fundamental change that makes a difference in people's lives. That's what being a Republican governor is all about. Republicans who govern well, who do what they say they're going to do, who offer solutions and not just partisan rhetoric, can win, will win anywhere in this country. And our governors, our Republican governors, and our Republican candidates, with your help, will lead the way. Thank you, and God bless you for your help. <laughs>